Hello, welcome to lesson 2.2. So last class, we had spent time learning to solve, graph, and write an interval notation or inequalities. This class, we're going to focus on word problem inequalities and seeing if we can uh, do kind of the same thing we did back in chapter one. So these are going to be treated exactly the same way. And we're going to still use our five steps for word problems. We're going to make sure we understand first so that may mean reading the word problem more than once. Then we're going to define a variable. And then the third step is to try to write an, in an equation. So for this time, we're going to write an inequality. That's the only difference. The fourth step is we're actually going to solve our inequality. And then, of course, the fifth step is now it's time to actually answer the question. So these are the steps we used last chapter, except for it was for equations, not inequalities. So let's dive right in. Most of these in today's lesson are gonna, I guess I will go ahead and say, are gonna be uh, kind of similar in that they're linear again. And remember the linear things is that you might have something times x, something added or subtracted, and we're comparing it to some other number, some total less than or greater than, whatever. This is kind of like the initial or starting amount when you're counting up something, and this is the rate, the per this, or for each this, and this is like the starting amount. So these are kind of things that we had talked about last chapter. So these are, are words like for each, or were the word per, and things, those are the things multiplied by x. So let's, let's jump right into an example. So while looking at your budget, you realize that you need to make at least 1800 each month to be able to survive, to pay your bills and have food. You would really like to have more money to be able to save some. Maybe you want to save up for a new Xbox or a new car, or just to save some. If you earn $9 an hour per hour at your job, how many hours do you need to work this month to earn enough money? Okay, so I think I understand this. We have a budget, and we need to work some hours. How many hours do we need to work to meet our budget? Okay, and so let's zoom in on some details here. We'd like to make at least 1800 Let's see. So if I were trying to, that would probably be the total amount. I would like my total to be, let's see, equal to 1800 greater than 1800 or less than 1800 Well, if I want to be at least 1800 that means I'd like to be greater than or equal to 1800s. The words at least means greater than or equal to. Okay, so I'd like to make more than 1800, but equal to is okay. That would help me survive. I could pay my bills and food. Okay, now how much do we make? We make $9 an hour. So that would be for each. Oh, well, we needed to find a variable first. I'm getting all out of hand here. So the question is, how many hours do I need to work? And so that looks like that should be my my variable is my number of hours. So let's let x equal hours worked. Kind of run together there. My spacing's not good, but hours worked. And so let's see. If I were to work x hours, I make $9 per hour. So there's that per hint, meaning that's our rate. So that's the piece that'll be multiplied by our x. So $9 times x. There's no starting amount. I'm not starting this month with any money, I guess. I guess last month I only made 1800 So I don't have anything added here. So this is really simple. So let's see. We read it, understood it. We defined a variable. We've written our inequality. So now we'd like to go ahead and just solve this to see if we can get our answer of how many hours I need to work. Well, to get 9 by or x by itself, I'd need to divide both sides by 9. And if I were to divide 1,800 by 9, you may want a uh, calculator. You may not. You may be able to do that in your head. x needs to be greater than or equal to 200. So you need to work at least 200 hours. You need to work 200 or more hours. So let's answer the question. Um... We need 200 or more hours, which is not 
terribly hard to get if there's five weeks in a month because the typical work week is a 40-hour work week. But, whew, so you need to work a lot to make it. Okay, let's look at another example. That one was pretty simple. Let's see if we can do another example. How about this one? So you're currently trying to limit, limit your cal caloric intake. Your doctor has instructed you to stay under 2,500 calories each day. A friend invites you over for some pizza. If you've already eaten 1,600 calories and each slice of pizza is 300 calories per slice, how many slices can you have while still following your doctor's orders? Ooh, okay, so let's understand this first. So your doctor said stay under this many calories. You've had lunch and breakfast, and you're going over for some pizza for some supper. And you need to figure out how many slices you can eat. So the question is, how many slices? So that would be our variable. Let's let x equal uh, slices of pizza. Let's do slices to be a bit lazy. Let's see if we can start writing in, uh, um, writing our inequality here. So we need to stay under... 2,500 calories. So under 2,500 calories would be less than 2,500. Okay. Now, you've already eaten 1,600 calories, and in each slice of pizza is 300. So it looks like this is your starting amount. You're coming to this party with a starting amount of 1,600 calories. And then here's our rate. For each pizza, we're going to get... 300 more calories. So that's the piece that multiplies. So there's our rate. There's our starting amount. Okay. And so there, we've modeled this as an inequality. So now we can solve it <clears throat> to try to answer our question. Okay. So what we'll need to do is solve for x. It's already simplified. X's aren't on both sides. So let's get x by itself. It has a 300 and a 1600. I need to get rid of the 1600 first. So minus 1600 from each side. So 300x is less than 2500. Minus 1600 is 900. Okay, it looks like I was very nice to you here. X is not by itself yet. I need to divide by 300. <clears throat> divide by 300. So x is less than 900 divided by 300 is 3. So answer the question, how many slices of pizza can you have? You need to have um, less than three. Okay. Now, this one's going to be interesting. I made it nice in a whole number, but what if it was a decimal? Uh, that's kind of something we'd have to kind of discuss and talk about. Are you allowed to cut these pizzas into pieces and have a third or a half? But if we're just counting whole slices, if this were a decimal, because we're trying to stay under a certain number of slices, we'd have to round that down, even if it were like 0.8. We wouldn't use traditional rounding rules. We would make sure we round it down to stay under 2,500 calories. Okay. One more of these. So let's say you drive a food delivery truck. The road leaving into and out of your factory has an old wooden bridge. Okay, you have to cross it. The max allowed weight on this old wooden bridge is only 4,000 pounds. The delivery truck by itself, with no boxes in it, weighs 3,200 pounds, and each box, weighs, each box that you deliver weighs 27 pounds. How many boxes can you deliver on your route and not break the bridge and die? Okay, well, let's see. This one makes sense. We have a bridge we have to cross. We have to worry about going over the weight. Let's see if we can define an x. So x equal, what's the question? How many boxes we can get over? So let, let's let x be the number of boxes. Now, let's read through and try to get out the details. The max allowed weight is 4,000 pounds. So... That's our total weight that we want to compare to as 4,000. Do we want to be greater than that or less than that? Because it's the max allowed weight, we're allowed to hit 4,000, but we want to be less than that or equal to it. I would rather be way less than that. But, you know, the factory probably wants me to deliver as many boxes as possible. Okay? So let's see if we can find um, a starting, oh, sorry, a starting number and a rate number. So the delivery truck by itself is 3,200 pounds. 
So we're starting with that weight without adding any boxes. So that must be the starting number. It's 3,200 pounds. Oh, and each, there's one of our keywords, each box weighs 25 pounds. Sorry, 27. I can't read. 27 pounds. So that must be our rate. For every box, we're adding 27 pounds, 27 pounds per box. And the truck is 3,200 pounds regardless. Okay. So now I should be able to, I've modeled this thing. I should be able to set out and solve this thing. Okay. So let's get a different color here. Let's go about solving it. Solve for X. I need to get X by itself. I need to move the 3,200 first. So subtract 3,200, subtract 3,200. So 2x, oh, <clears throat> that's not a 2x, 27x, maybe I need my glasses, 27x <clears throat> is less than or equal to 4,000 minus 3,200 is 800. And like I said, if you need a calculator, use a calculator, there's no shame in that. Okay, now... The next thing we're going to want to do is get x by itself still. We're still solving, so I need to divide both sides by 27. So x has got to be less than or equal to, and if you use a calculator to do 800 divided by 27, what you'll get is 29.63. Okay, and so we need to stay under 29.63 boxes. Let's answer the question, how many boxes can you deliver? Ooh, so these are like whole boxes of food. Do you think the factory's going to pack me a 0.6 of a box? No, they're going to fill these boxes up. And so they're just loading boxes, and I am i can't tell them to do 0.6. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Traditional rounding would tell you, oh, it's a 0.6, we round up to 30. But if I carry 30 boxes across, 29.6 is exactly 4,000 pounds. If I go up to 30, I'm a few pounds over, and I may break the bridge and wash away in the river. So whenever we have these limiting ones where I can't go over something, I have to stay less than some number, we always have to round down. We must, must round down. Even if the rounding rule should be up, we must round down. So whenever you have one where you have to round, it has to be a whole number. We can't have half a box. Um, and we're less than or equal to trying to stay under something. So what we would like to see is x is less than or equal to 29. So how many boxes can I carry across? I can carry across 29 or less. If I have more than that, we're breaking the bridge. Okay. Well, that's all I have for you today. Um, we'll keep building our inequality abilities. We'll even do another word problem type, I think, next lesson as we build into some bigger and more interesting word, uh, not word problems, more interesting inequalities, we'll be able to handle another more interesting word problem. All right, see you later.